Hello, and in this session we will look at the effects that gambling winnings or losses have on child support. Now we're here, we're not here to promote whether gambling is good, positive or negative or negative to society. What we want to look at is does the gambling revenues and losses affects child support process. So let's look at a, a series of gambling called internet gambling and this is called fair use. We looked at a few of the online companies are now promoting uh, they call it betting uh, you know not gambling in, 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 our, in our society and we look at a company called DraftKings and where you can bet on your favorite sports team, your uh, college ball team as well as other uh, functions. So this is a new class of what we call wagers and betting, which is called online gambling. Next, fair use. We look at another company called FanDuel Fantasy. Again, they're promoting you know online betting within your state, and of course, only if it's available within your state. If it's not available, then you can't utilize the services of these companies. So this is another company again promote you know, wagers and betting on your favorite sports team, a fantasy team, and so forth. Now let's move to what we call the traditional to sort of gambling or wagers, which are scratch-off. You can get it at any sort of uh, truck stop, you know, uh, gas station, your local stores, where for like $5 you could scratch and you may get a $20 card, a $50 card back, or even a couple of hundred. This is also factored into what is called the gambling environment. And of course, the bellwether of all gambling are the casinos, the blackjack tables, uh, and so forth, and horse betting. Those are, you know, the old traditional and, and still active area of gambling. If you have not looked at our video called the $600 Cash App Tax, uh, please do so. You will find uh, some amazing information there. Hello, my name is Chris, and in this session, we're we'll look at the impact, if any, on the child support agency regarding gambling. You can Listen to us on your favorite podcast. That's Spotify, Apple, Amazon. Also, you can reach us via email at chrish289 at protonmail.com. Also, we ask from time to time donations. Yes, we do ask for donations. Uh, we bring you a lot of information and research, and we want to be the place where you can come to and get information by topic that affects your child support case. And for that, for our work, we ask for a $25 gift, but we'll accept a $5 cash app, we'll, a $10 PayPal. We'd be happy to accept any donation. So let's look at the statute that covers gambling. It's 45 CFR 264.0. And it reads, Casino, gambling casino, gaming establishment, for which the primary purpose is to accommodate wagering of money. Right? That's your casinos, your blackjacks, your, your horse racing, and of course, your online and internet betting. Next, any other establishment that offers casino, gambling, gambling activities incidental to the principal purpose of, of business. So that's your, your gas station that sells the, the cash apps or your local store that will have a lotto in it or you know those type of establishment, meaning it's not their primary business, but it is one of their principal business is to allow you to wager money. The IRS has an entire section on how to report gambling income and losses, and that's irs.gov. And also... Because of many cyber crimes, make sure you're going to the irs.gov website. 
If you have any questions on tax issues, you can always call the IRS or reach out to the IRS, but you should also consult your tax professional. Again, we're not giving you tax advice. We're mostly giving you tax information and education regarding gambling. So here we are at the form for gambling. If you have any type of winning over $600, you will receive a form W2 with the letter G as in gaming. Yes, it looks very similar to a W2 form, but it has the G at the end. In addition, if if you're a, a, a what is called a serial gambler or you know someone who gambles a lot, you may also get a form called 5754, and that's it tracks all of your winnings, your losses. If you take this, for example, if gambling is part of your business, if that's your only source of income, then you will get this form as well. So all of your winnings and losses over $600 are reported on the form W2G, which looks similar to your W2 income tax form. So let's look at the process that involves just the gambling piece, okay? If you were to gamble. Again, we're not here to say whether gambling is positive or negative. We're not here to promote gambling. We're just talking about the effects of it. So if you had $5,000 for the year and you lost it uh, for gambling, as well as you had $5,000 for the year and you make $20,000, right? So those are winnings and losses. If you, in the first case, if you, if you wager $5,000 and you lost the entire thing, it is not deductible. Winnings and losses are, is a relationship under the tax rule. That is, you can only write off your losses to the extent of your winnings. That is, if you wager 5000 and you won 20000 for the year, you may deduct 5000 which leaves you with about 15000 But again, that's just a very basic baseline example. Uh, consult your tax advisor for specifics of surrounding that because you may have other expenses against that, such as traveling to and from the casino, comps, you name it. Those are part of the, the process. So let's look at just the IRS piece of how gambling is managed, whether you win or lose. Gambling losses are taxable, but only to the extent of your winnings, right? It's law, the, the, the deductible only if you have any winnings. Next, it requires you to report all the money you win as a taxable income on your return. That's where you get that W-2G form, right? Next, deductions are only available if you itemize your deductions on your 1040 tax returns. Now, you and your tax advisor, if you use one, will tell you whether or not you've itemized or you don't itemize. If you claim the standard deduction, then the gambling losses are not a factor. So if you're just a standard filer, a W-2 filer, then gambling losses. If you're in a business category, again, that's a different category when it comes to uh, gambling. But again, your financial advisor can answer that. So let's say that you're in front of the administrative court or judicial court regarding your child support, and they just said, well, you are, you're gambling the money away on, uh, you're gambling your revenues uh, revenues, but therefore you should be able to pay child support. Well, hold the brakes here. There's a due process requirement under the clause, and it reads, in order for you to be affected by the loss of any property interest, that is your gambling winnings, they must give you a notice and an opportunity to be heard before you're deprived of that, or even to discuss it. You should also have the right to a full, fair opportunity to present evidence in defense. This is what happens in child support. They never allow you to bring any evidence. The judge talks over you, the opposing counsel or the prosecutor talks over you. You need to stop that. Okay, that's part of your due process. And the case law is Bostic versus State Department of Revenue for Child Support Enforcement, the Supreme Court in Alaska. Yes, this is one of the go-to cases you need if you want to have a hearing on whether or not your, pro your, your, your property is being taken from you. That includes your income. That includes your driver's license. That includes your passport. Bostic versus state is the quintessential due process requirement that you should insist on with your child support case. So 
let's review what's going on within the states as a result of gambling and the gambling policy. Not many states has a policy with child support for gambling. For example, now the numbers on this chart, I you know, picked this from a few sources, so I'm not 100% accurate on every single dollar number, but I aggregated from various sources. So let's start off with Arizona. Arizona does have a, a policy in place to factor in gambling. So is uh, Illinois. But in the state of New Mexico, right, Mexico sort of, it's a little bit different, you know, and again, each state, Indiana as well. But one thing for sure, the child support agency would like to go after all 50 states in order to include gambling revenues within the child support program. So, to summarize what's happening, there isn't a general policy from Congress regarding gambling organization and the intercept of those winnings within child support. And part of that is child support is a federal program. And the states are the ones who are trying to implement what surrounds a federal program. So, right now, it's a state-by-state -state issue. Uh, you need to understand if you're a gambler or you want to you know, specialize in the gambling and you want to see how that affects your child support, then you have to look at the state statutes for that. There is no federal statutes. As always, we ask you to look to our masterclass, uh, which is our website where we have ideas, resources, and courses you can take to help you defeat the child support program. If you have any questions on this section, which is gambling and child support, please feel free to send us an email. And we also ask you to subscribe to our channel. Let's get the subscription up. If this is the first time you're visiting, please subscribe to our, and our channel and hit the notification bell. And of course, we always ask for donation to help us to continue our research. And that brings us to the end of this presentation. Thanks. Have a good day.